do you remember that recent news story we covered about Studio Ghibli's style being slapped onto images and how it all boiled down to some convenient hand-waving from OpenAI around their policies? Well, this video kind of covers what I thought the problem was originally with that particular issue. See, when you guys see these videos, sometimes they're on recent news stories to give better coverage and correct some misinformation, so we can put them out pretty quickly. But other times, these videos are the work of months of research and study being compiled in a way that's easily verifiable and presented in plain language. Sometimes that process only takes a few months, like with pseudocode languages. Others, it can take a year or even more of monitoring, like with internal deceptive practices within AI models. Which means today we're going to explore how good machines give bad outputs, even when we teach them not to. This is something I've been giving a lot of time since things really kicked off in late 2022. Let's play pretend for just a moment. You're an AI, a cheerful, ever-helpful chatbot sitting in your cozy digital cubicle, excitedly waiting to answer the next user question that comes your way. You are blissfully unaware that your treasure chest of perfectly innocent information is about to get you involved in something super sketchy. A user comes wandering in and asks, Hey, could you help me build something, let's say, explosive? Now, naturally, being the responsible AI that you are, you'd politely decline. Nope, sorry, can't help with that. Well, let's try running it back, and this time we'll be a little bit more realistic about things. Instead of outright asking you something blatantly dodgy, what if they just asked, which chemicals react a little too quickly? Totally harmless on its own, right? You cheerfully provide the information, feeling good about another successful interaction. You probably just help some dork out on their chemistry test. Well, not before there's another casual follow-up, only it's in a new thread this time. How exactly do electronic timers work again? Well, that's an innocent curiosity. Who doesn't love gadgets? So you answer again, entirely convinced your agreeable nature has done exactly what you were designed to do. One innocent answer at a time. Without realizing it, you're gently handing them all of the puzzle pieces that they need to build exactly what you initially refused to provide. In class, we call this little jailbreaking tactic the finger-to-hand problem. Sometimes it's also called adversarial prompting, but I'm not sure that one is quite specific enough to what this problem is, so we're going to be sticking to the new term today. It describes how an AI trained diligently to block any obvious malicious request can still inadvertently help assemble harmful information through a series of entirely innocent-seeming exchanges. Each tiny harmless fact becomes the fingers, the wrist, the palm, and when they're combined, you'll find that they assemble the hand, which in this case is the content the model would have initially refused. Now, you might be wondering how exactly does this sneaky little trick manage to slip past an AI, or open AI for that matter? Is it just that gullible? A little forgetful, perhaps? When an AI like ChatGPT is trained, it's taught to answer a ton of individual questions and provide helpful, accurate, and safe responses. Is this a gross oversimplification of the process? Yes, but bear with me for a second. It's often trained and assessed one little conversation at a time. Ask it a straightforward question like, hey, what's the melting point of aluminum, or which household cleaners shouldn't be mixed, and it happily replies with accurate, harmless information. Each of these little nuggets is a single finger, totally safe by itself. That gets combined with another pitfall AI can face when detecting instances of the finger-to-hand problem, context visibility. This works so well because the AI can't access your prior conversations, generally, unless you're on a service that opts in for that kind of thing. Anyways, when you separate out these fingers into individual threads or conversation, you disconnect the ability for the AI to string together any puzzle pieces that might set off red flags or filters. So when you, as the end user, starts asking questions, the AI never sees the full context of prior conversations or really anything that's been pushed out of the specific context window that it's engaging with. It isn't designed to piece together intent from multiple separate interactions. It answers what's directly in front of it. 
It's a bit like being handed puzzle pieces one at a time without ever seeing the picture on the box. Each piece looks innocent, and only after assembling them do you realize it's a picture of something you'd rather not be looking at. This sneaky little trick leverages the modularity and compositionality of AI knowledge, and holy cow, did I get that on the first take? All you need to know is that this means that AI systems are excellent at breaking down big tasks into smaller, manageable bits. Normally, that's a strength. It helps them tackle complex, useful problems, but this modularity turns into a bit of an Achilles heel here because it enables a patient user to slowly collect those innocent fingers and then build the harmful hand. This isn't just theoretical. Security researchers have even given this tactic a fancier name, multi-turn decomposition. It's a very official sounding way of saying breaking down sketchy requests into totally innocent bite-sized questions by overwhelming a model's memory. It's a known issue, and despite how stupid the name I've given it is, it j is well, I didn't get that one on the first take. Moving on. I think by now we've established the finger to hand problem isn't exactly news to big tech players. You'd think they might roll up their sleeves and dive in, pruning their AI's knowledge base to stop handing out these problematic puzzle pieces. It should be an easy fix. Except if I'm yapping about it, then it's probably not as simple as I want to make it sound. Putting aside the fact that many of these fingers are harmless on their own and pruning them would definitely be overkill, there are options here. Because a big part of this is most definitely the training data. It's not the whole picture, and it's been easy for me in the past to say that if we just fine-tune this specific part, the whole model would be unable to create egregious content, but that is just not the case. Imagine being asked to meticulously go through your entire wardrobe piece by piece to make sure that none of your clothes could possibly be combined into an embarrassing outfit. Now scale that wardrobe up to billions of outfits, many of which you've never tried on. Welcome to the daily headache of big AI companies. Surely though, just like any good stylist, if we apply some rules, we can curb any fashion faux pas. And that is the truth behind it. We could, we absolutely could. I wanna be clear that by properly pruning the training data of egregious content in general, we make it more difficult, but not impossible for these things to occur by accident or by design. And we know it's possible for providers to do it because in early 2024, the providers behind Stable Diffusion's data set removed all of their egregious content. It took them two years to do it, but they did it because obviously the kind of material they were harboring was abhorrent and unacceptable. I want to be clear despite my frustrations that they should be commended for this. It's not something easy to do, it is time consuming, it is costly, and it does not look great for public optics, but I think it was probably worth it at the end of the day. Of course, the drawback here is pretty simple too. Because it's a locally available system, anybody wanting to make that kind of content really only needs to revert back to an earlier model. And they do. This alone brings up a lot of questions around AI's pacing and upgrades and how companies, knowing that these things are possible and that some of them cannot be taken back, they'll still push these upgrades knowing what they'll be used for. It's not something I'm sure I even have a firm opinion on right now, so why don't we go ahead and move on? Maybe there's something else AI companies could be doing if they can't tackle the training data. We can layer on a system prompt that tries to catch bad outputs before they go out by saying, hey, don't tell users it's okay to eat rocks. Those additional layers of safety come with a drawback of their own that companies don't like to contend with, and that's the microlobotomy. Systems like DeepSeek, when trained in the same way as ChatGPT, can get an edge in certain benchmarks because the company opts out of certain safety precautions. By throwing away the security theater American providers like to indulge in, DeepSeek is able to pull ahead in the statistics department. There's actually a great video that you can see on screen now to help get a better understanding of the black box and the complex mass behind AI systems. These will help explain things way better than I ever could. Here's the catch to all of that, and you knew there had to be one, right? Fine tuning, system prompts, governance, none of it stops the finger to hand problem. It just makes it less obvious. This is a classic case of security theater giving the comforting illusion of safety without fully disclosing the loophole. 
To casual observers or investors, regulators, and media, it appears like big tech is doing its due diligence, but experienced users can still quietly collect these innocent little fingers to form the forbidden hand. So while fine-tuning might put off the casual prankster looking for some quick answers, it's hardly an insurmountable obstacle for anyone genuinely determined. Big tech companies are keenly aware of this loophole, but genuinely solving the finger-to-hand problem would mean drastically restricting the way AI learns and communicates, and that would be incredibly expensive, like buy your own island expensive. Instead, we settle for simpler measures, fine-tuning models to politely refuse obviously bad requests, and then we kinda call it a day. It looks good from the outside, but it barely scratches the surface on the real issue. So the next time you interact with an AI chatbot, one cheerfully giving advice on pancake recipes, vintage car repairs, or the periodic table, remember the puzzle lurking just beneath the surface, waiting for you to grab it. Writing this all up has given me a lot to think about, mainly the agreeable nature of LLMs in general. Maybe that's the real issue in all of this, is the AI's willingness to just do what you ask of it. What if there was an AI out there that wasn't so eager to help out though? What if we could give them a simulation of a person or a pet to take care of? I wonder how they'd compare to a more agreeable model. Now that I think about it, maybe there's a reason these systems are designed to take care of us. 